Check it out, guys. I made this. Welcome back to the Bald Shredder channel. And what do we have here today? Well, something really special. This is the newest guitar built in the Bald Shredder custom shop, AKA my garage. And you can see it's got this beautiful rising sun design. I will tell you all about the guitar, where the neck, the body came from, how I did it, why I did it, all that fun stuff, of course. But first, you guys are gonna see me shred on this thing. And I decided because this one is extra special, I thought I'm gonna get my buddy, Lester Mitchell, shred master Lester Mitchell to join me on this extra special shred jam. Check it out. <clears throat> a lot of fast flying fingers, wasn't it? If you guys are not familiar with Lester, you are not subscribed to his channel, I'm gonna put a link to one of his videos. You need to get over there and watch his stuff and subscribe to his channel also. Not only is he an amazing guitar player as you just saw and heard, but he's really funny. He does a lot of funny stuff. So get over there and check out Lester. Alrighty, the guitar. So first let's talk about the Rising Sun design. The Rising Sun design on electric guitars, especially like 80s shredder style guitars, it's nothing new. It's been around since the 80s. There are a lot of guitars out there that have a Rising Sun paint job. Usually it's red and white, painted, right? Sometimes other colors. Doc and guitar player John Levin has one in black and red that looks really sweet. So yeah, there's lots of them out there and they've been out there for years. But what I decided to do was something different. The first thing I decided was I'm not gonna paint it I'm going to stain it because I want to be able to see the wood grain underneath uh, the stain. And when you paint, it covers up the wood grain. And then I was thinking like, okay, how am I going to do that? How am I going to do stain like in the stripes pattern, you know, with like the, the sun rays without it kind of bleeding over into the other section? I really had to think about that. And then I don't know how or why, but suddenly it dawned on me. I was like, you know what? I'm going to use my quarter inch trim router to carve out the lighter colored parts. And that's exactly what I did. So I don't know how well you guys can see it. I'll try to get a good close up picture. These parts right here actually are about one millimeter lower than the red part, than like the true top of the body. So it gives it like a really cool three dimensional, like 3D effect. And I just, I think that's awesome. And you can feel it, it's, it's bumpy. You know, like I said, it's one millimeter. So you can feel every time you get to the red part, it goes up 
and then it goes down on the other side. And it's the same idea that I did with this guitar over here, guys, my Lynch Burnt Tiger, where I carved in the tiger stripes with that quarter inch trim router, just like that. So when I say I've never seen another guitar in the world out there anywhere, and this is like the only one in the entire world, it's true. I've never seen a Rising Sun design done that way, where they carved out and lowered the top of the body like this. It doesn't mean that there isn't one out there somewhere, I've just never seen one. Now the way I had to do it, guys, is I stained the whole thing in red. So the whole top of the body was red, and it looked like the back of the body, just all stained in red. Then I took the lid from my coffee can, my Folgers coffee, and put it right here, put it there, and then traced like the half circle around it, and then very carefully using a ruler and measurements and a straight edge and all that, I drew all the lines where the stripes or the rays would be. Very carefully, again, measuring so that it's like an even amount on every single one of them. Nice and even, looks really good. Now the one thing that I was concerned about and that I didn't know for sure is that how deep would the red stain go into the wood? If I route out just one millimeter off the top, Am I going to route that out and like it's still going to be red underneath? Well, luckily that didn't happen. And then after I did that, I decided, you know, I want the wood to look a little nicer. So I actually put some stain on the later parts. So that's not just like the plain wood or the bare wood. I think it was like a pecan stain or something like that. So it darkened up these areas a little bit. And then after that, to finish the whole entire thing, I went over the whole thing in tongue oil. And that's how I ended up with that. It's incredible. It looks incredible, feels incredible, plays, sounds great. I'm so happy with the way it turned out. Okay, so what's on this guitar? Like, wh where did these parts come from? What is it? What is it featuring? Let's go over that. First, let's talk about the body. Now, if you've watched enough of my Bald Shredder custom-built guitar videos, you know that I pretty much buy all my dinky bodies, the ones that I really want to make something really good, really special. I buy them from K&E Guitars. Mitch over at K&E does absolutely fantastic work. And I love the fact that he's right here in Southern California. Doesn't take that long to do the work. The price is really reasonable and you're getting such an amazing product. So if I'm going to have a dinky body made, Mitch at k and &E. he's the only guy I'm gonna go to and I have been going to and for sure I'll have him make more bodies for me in the future. If you guys remember, several months back I told you I, I ordered two bodies and two necks at the same time for the custom builds and it was the two dinky bodies from k and &E, and then the two shredder necks with the Charvel headstocks from Music Craft. And let me tell you guys, the Music Craft necks, they are just Fantastic. I don't know how else to describe it. Just so awesome. It's basically the same neck that's on the Burl guitar and the only two differences being that this one is a 22 fret neck, the other one's 24, and this one has a reverse headstock and the other one doesn't. Other than that, they're the same. They have the same super thin neck profile. In fact, this is the thinnest neck profile that Music Craft offers. And of course, they've got the extra jumbo 6100 frets that I love. It's got a rosewood fretboard, maple neck, 12 inch radius, and um, just like I always do when I order necks, I ordered it with no finish at all, and I finished it on the back with tongue oil. And on this particular one, I finished the headstock in red because I just think it looks totally awesome to match the red on the rising sun. So yeah, awesome. The bridge is from Music Lily. You can get it on Amazon for like, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 bucks, something like that works great. The switch is also from Music Lily, as well as the tuners on the headstock. I put a couple of roller string trees on the headstock, and it's got my favorite set of humbuckers that I get for less than 40 bucks on AliExpress. Yeah, the Dauntless pickups that I have in like most of my guitars. I think I forgot to mention guys that this is an alder body. It is a two-piece center seamed matched, book matched, whatever you want to call it, alder body. And I I just, I'm so glad that I decided to stain this instead of painting it. I mean, the wood grain just looks awesome. I just love it. And the match is so good. Like you could barely even see like where the center seam is. And I just love the way the stain turned out on this one. The wood really took the red stain really well. Like there's no blotches or anything like that. And it's just, yeah, it's so great. You can see the grain 
feels great. It's so smooth with the tongue oil finish. Same thing on the front, you know, I just love the way you can see that grain under the red and under the light brown. Just, man, I am happy with this. All right guys, so let me know what you think. Do you think it looks awesome? Do you think it looks cool? And have you ever seen a guitar with the Rising Sun design carved in it like this, like I did on this one? Has anybody ever seen one, whether it was like in person or you just saw pictures on the internet? I'm curious to see if there are any others out there. I don't think that there are, but there could be. Hey, you never know, right? All right guys, as usual, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.